Hello friends, welcome to the farm kitchen. Today we're making beef stroganoff in a jar. It is my favorite. There's quite a few meals in a jar that I've made and canned, but beef stroganoff is by far our favorite. And today we're gonna to go through step by step how we can it and then at the end, we're actually gonna take one of the jars from last year and have it for dinner. We'll show you what you do once you're ready to prepare it. It's very simple and it's wonderful to have on hand. So first up comes the meat and I have a wonderful person who's willing to take all the fat off and chop my meat for me. Okay, start it off, just remove the uh, fat cap off the back and it is uh, a round rose, but I think you have a lot of flexibility in the type of meat to use. But Again, this was uh, one of our Angus beef, and uh, it's been very good. Now, I'm just going to cut this into cubes. It says, I think in the ball book, two by two, but I like them a little smaller than that. I usually am doing like one by two. This is nice. has just a little bit of fat marbled in there, and which I think is going to cook out nice and make it real tender. But if you look at these, those are nice. I think those are nice size. Should be good. Yeah, can't wait to enjoy them. This is teamwork in the kitchen. When he does the meat, I'll do the veggies. What's the old saying? A couple that cooks together stays together? I think so. <laughs> that works for me. I like cooking with you. Yeah. We're a good team. I'm using red onions just because that's what I have the most of down there. I'm going to go just use the three big ones. We're actually doing a quadruple batch. Each recipe of this only makes two quarts. Well, I want a lot more than that. So <laughs> I hope to get eight quarts out of this. That'll be basically more than eight meals because each time we open a quart, it usually gives us two meals for each of us. We'll have it for dinner one night and then usually the leftovers for our lunch the next day. And it is so delicious. Looking forward to dinner tonight to have some. And you really can have it ready in like kind of about 15 minutes. The biggest part is cooking the noodles. And you can't put the noodles in when you can it because you cannot can any kind of pasta. So that's the one thing you have to add at the end. Noodles and then the uh, sour cream. But that's a piece of cake compared to the whole process of making beef stroganoff. So this beef came from the two that we just took in yeah. like six weeks ago. Yep, that's the freshest beef. They were both heifers. Yep. Now we have two steers we're raising for next year. And the steers get a little bigger than the heifers do. Our first steer was how big, Robbie? Yeah, it's 1,500 pounds. And the heifers that went in, they were about 1,200 pounds. And it's actually not, that's a nice size. Yeah. It's still a lot of beef. 1500 maybe is a little big. Yeah. First time we, you know, slaughtered cows and got it back, I couldn't believe how much beef that was. It's like, yeah. man, <laughs> it's a lot of beef. And some people ask, like, heifer or steer, or is there any difference? And yeah, there's some you know, wives' tail difference of the flavor, but they're, I think they're essentially the same. They're all But good. if you know otherwise, let us know. Yeah. Does everybody know what a heifer is? I don't know. Tell them. No. I didn't know until <laughs> we had the farm. <laughs> well, heifer is just a female cow that has had only one or no calves. They don't become a cow until they've had two or more calves. Yeah, when we first got the farm, we had a more experienced farmer over here, and we're calling them cows. And he's like, they're not cows yet. They wouldn't be a cow until they've had two calves. Yeah. That was news to us. So now we know. We either have heifers or steers. And I guess everybody knows the difference between a steer and a bull, right? <laughs> Maybe not. How are you going to describe that? <laughs> steer doesn't have all its parts. Not intact. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. That. That's, That's good an amazing meat. piece for a round to yeah. have that, yeah. just a little bit of fat in there. Sometimes the rounds just get too 
you know, dry, not any fat in them, and then they're not good. And I like slightly bigger pieces of onions in this. I like actually have little hunks of it. So I don't chop it real fine. Okay. So is there any difference? Why did you use the red onions this time? I just said that a while ago. Oh. You were sleeping. No. Oh. Because that's what I have the most of down there. Okay. For some reason, a lot of our yellow onions isn't storing well. They're, they're going real fast, so I've been using them up as fast so as So now I you have film record. I wasn't actually listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> like I needed proof. <laughs> <laughs> As we get older, it's not just not listening. Sometimes he doesn't hear me, really hear me, and then other times he's just not listening. It's hard to tell which is which. Well, my hearing isn't great, but sometimes my listening isn't great either. Yeah. Put them <laughs> together and you got problems. <laughs> but I'm sure we're the only 60 plus couple that has that issue. Huh? Oh yeah. Well, I'm gonna be pretty close to done on my side. Yeah, I don't have a lot to do because uh, some of the mushrooms, the really big pieces of mushrooms, I'll cut them in half. Okay. Just mix for better packing in the jars. And pretty soon I need to get my jars in the oven to get them started sterilizing. I know they say you don't have to sterilize when you press your can. I don't know. I just still feel better if I do. You know what surprised me when you said about making this is I thought that you prepared it and cooked it and then you can you know, can it. Like everything yeah. else that you, you prepare and make it. Then you can it. This is completely raw pack. You just get all the ingredients together, put them in a bowl, stir them up, and then put them in the jars and put hot broth over. I mean, it's a very easy process. So it essentially cooks, it cooks in the can. in the jar. In the, the jar. When you're canning it. And you're canning it with a pressure canner. So it's like, I don't know, what temperature did I get up to in there? Higher than you can without pressure canning. Yeah, well. Look at how hot it gets. We're not that far above sea level, so 212 be boiling and then when it's under pressure it can go higher than that yep. so. I just know when it's done you eat it, it's tender tasty it's delicious yeah and we love beef stroganoff yeah I wasn't kidding when I said it's my favorite no no he always gets excited when it's like what should we have for dinner and I say beef stroganoff yes do that now I'm gonna try in a couple weeks beef burgundy I've never done that canning I want to see what that I like that out. too yeah so that might be our <laughs> another favorite who knows and there's also a beef and wine sauce. I'll experiment with all of them. It's just it's so convenient to have the meals ready or partially ready. Makes it a lot easier, especially during the summer, you're up working in the garden and come in, you don't have a lot of time to cook. So having things canned and ready really helps. All right, I have all the ingredients ready to put together. The mushrooms, onions, and garlic, the wonderful meat, and all the spices and Worcestershire sauce. I need to get some beef broth warming up. That's what you pour over the whole jar once you get the stuff in the jars. And this is our beef broth from our beef bones. I think there's four more jars down there, so I'm gonna need to make it soon. We use a lot of broth. I guess because I make a lot of soups. We'll get that warming up, and I need to get like three inches of water in my pressure canner. And then we'll start mixing everything together while that's perking. All right, I'm just gonna get the onions, ooh, that smells strong of onion, mushrooms and garlic kind of mixed together. And then I'm gonna mix together all the herbs, Worcestershire sauce, and tomato paste. And this is our tomato paste too that we made. So. So wait a minute, how much of the stuff today is ours? The beef, the onions, the garlic, the tomatoes, the beef broth, the, uh, the uh, mushrooms aren't ours. We haven't grown mushrooms yet. Okay. We've talked about it. So in here, I'm gonna put some salt and pepper. And since it's a quadruple batch, it's like four teaspoons of pepper, eight of salt, thyme leaves, parsley. It's actually one cup of tomato paste. and one cup of Worcestershire sauce. Is that saying it right, Worcestershire? All right, so that stuff's all mixed together good. Boy, does that smell good, all those spices together, herbs. Nice. Woo and I'll pour it over the mushrooms, onions, and garlic, and get that mixed up. And then the last thing you put in is the meat. Mm. 
Get every drop of that goodness. I'm just trying to get that so it's kind of like evenly distributed. That's a big batch. Mm -hmm. Is that going to feed us for the year? Well, I don't know. We need a lot of new <coughs> stroganoff. We might have to do another batch. But this will give us hopefully eight quarts. Maybe nine. I don't know. Hopefully eight. So get that all mixed up. And then we put in the wonderful beef. Hey, I was noticing something. What were you noticing? Oh, your cupboard doors are closed. You just closed them before we went. See, I'm getting better. Uh-huh. Well, I have photographic evidence that they weren't. I know. They're always open. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, now the meat. Uh oh I might need a bigger bowl. <laughs> We're going to have to go out antiquing and find me a bigger bowl. You know that? Yeah, look at that. Now, it's funny. When you're making this, canning this, it doesn't look like much because you're going to pack it raw. It looks really weird but it cooks in the jar. And the flavors just all flow together and it turns out scrumptious. But it, it does look weird, I gotta say. If you're used to canning things that are cooked, it's hard to get used to raw pack. And I've done both. They pretty much all turn out yummy. It's like it takes some muscles to do that there. Yeah, maybe I need a man. Good workout. No, you're pretty strong. Although, what did you just say a while ago? <laughs> I just said how tiring it was standing there all that time cutting, cutting all meat. that meat. And I didn't get much empathy or no. sympathy. <laughs> Poor guy. Kitchen work's too hard. Yeah, it is. What do you think, women? Kitchen work is hard. And it does get tiring. My back was tired first. Yeah. Yeah, my back gets tired standing for a while. So when I say the words, can I ask you something? What does that remind you of? <laughs> Our one grandson, he's so cute. He's always like, Mima, can I ask you something? Mima, can I tell you something? I love it. I'm like, yeah, Tice, you can always tell right, me something. So, Mima, can I ask you something? Okay. What's all that stuff on the counter behind you? Like the <laughs> stuff behind the towel. Behind the curtain. <laughs> it's actually vinegar. I'm making apple cider vinegar. Nice. Yeah. And this is actually blackberry vinegar. I want to try a fruit vinegar, like for a fruit, you know, olive oil vinaigrette. That might be good on some salads. Right. You're going to do a video on that someday? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's on the other side? It looks more I'm colorful. I'm still learning. Oh, that. Yeah. Fire cider. Ooh, I love that. We've just started using that. It's a very good, supposed to be very good for your immune system. And if I tell you what's in it, it sounds really weird. It's uh, vinegar with onions, garlic, horseradish root, ginger root, turmeric root, Oranges, lemons, peppercorns, um, some what else? rosemary, some thyme, and jalapeno peppers. I think it's more appropriately called fire water. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> oh, and this one has elderberries in it, that's why it gives it the really pretty color. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. But you steep this for a while and then drain it, and then you do a shot like every morning, or if you're, if you're sick, do a couple shots a day. Yeah, it's wicked. And it's it is. It's good though. Yeah. <laughs> clears your sinuses that's for sure but it's it's supposed to be very good for you so we're just now learning how to use it and trying it so if it works and goes well i'll do a video on it and tell you about it i don't it. care if it works it tastes good and it really does it sounds weird um when you tell somebody the ingredients they're always like oh. but then they taste it and they go oh that's not as bad as i expected <laughs> and he's like oh i really like that yeah. so i like trying new things and experimenting some will go by the wayside but some i think are going to become part of our lifestyle so now it's time to put this beautiful stuff in the jars. This is the fun part, getting the stuff in the jars. And you're supposed to leave an inch of head space, and you're supposed to put it in fairly packed, but not like pounded tight packed. Just so it's pretty, pretty condensed. It's like there's one jar. I'll put a little bit more in. Then after you get them all full, then you pour the broth in within one inch head space. I think I'll try to get five in the first canning load. So there's one. I'll put a little more. 
And so it's just playing around until it looks good to you. That looks good. Okay, now it's just a matter of pouring broth in, and then you have to make sure all the air bubbles are out and make sure you have an inch of head space. You have to measure it or you wing it? What? The, the inch? I'll, I'll measure it. I have my little tool. But it really takes a while for it to all percolate and settle down in among all that stuff. You really do have to make sure the air bubbles are out. So you have to keep adding it as the air bubbles pop up. you use a, like a wooden stick or something to poke down there to get the bubbles I actually, out? Actually, I use a, uh, a skewer for like shish kebabs, oh, a wooden yeah. skewer. That works great for poking down in there and making the air bubbles pop up. Okay. Here, I'll show you in a minute. So is this the least exciting part of uh, canning? Uh, it's all exciting, isn't it? Now the least exciting is then you put it in, you have to wait for it to come to pressure, wait for it to go through the whole process. It'll be like an hour and a half, two hours until it's ready, you know, done. So that's the hard part, just waiting for it to cook. But then you can go do other stuff while it's doing it. See, there's tons of air bubbles coming up. So reach down in there and get all those air bubbles out. And then we'll put more broth in to get it to an inch of head space. Oh yeah, I can see them. There are. Mm -hmm. Well, watch this. And there's just tons of air bubbles come up, and the broth just goes down, down, down. And you just keep adding until you have an inch, and you think all the air bubbles out. And I usually take them and give them oh. a couple good bangs at the very end. So this is exciting part. Oh, yeah. For a canner, it is. For a person who loves to can, every part's yeah. exciting. No, I can see how much you enjoy it. You enjoy eating it. Absolutely. Even though you had to stand forever and cut oh, that beef. Oh, my back is still sore. You appreciate this more than other stuff, huh? Because you had to help. I do. All right, so when you're ready to eat it, this is actually stuff I canned last year. It's just a matter of popping the lid, Pour it in your can, your pot. Voila, look at all that beautiful beef. Turn some heat on. And I need to stir in two tablespoons of flour. You can't put any thickeners in when you're canning. That, any thickeners have to be added after the fact. So one tablespoon and two tablespoons. And just kind of whisk that in there. I'll get that completely warmed up. I already have my nose going over there. When that's completely heated up, then we'll stir in a little bit of sour cream right before we stir or serve it. We actually decided to have this for lunch. We were gonna do it for dinner, but we have some grandsons coming for dinner now, and I think they'd rather have pizza than beef stroganoff. <laughs> so we're having beef stroganoff for lunch. And you see, you have to be creative in finding up ways to do things since the canner's going on this one. The back ones aren't really strong enough to do anything. So I have my noodles doughing on an induction burner. And if you see any other videos, I use these when I do a lot of canning so I have extra burners. But I'm telling you what, after using induction burners, <laughs> I'm starting to push for an induction range, like a six burner induction range. It is so much faster than a gas stove. I have been a loyal, loyal gas stove person for years. But now that I've started using these little guys, Induction's better. Who do you have to convince to make that happen? Hmm, who? The one I cook for. I think he'll go for it. <laughs> but we've done a couple contests, how long it takes to boil water. And you really do control it. It's, it's either high or low. When you turn it off, it's off. It's, I am really sold on induction burners. The only problem, this particular thing, what's it made of aluminum, will not work with induction burners. The pressure canner, doesn't work with induction burners. If anybody out there has bought other canners and used it with induction, let me know if they work, what you use and how to do it, because that would be the one glitch. Stainless steel. Yeah, any stainless steel canner of me getting rid of the gas and getting induction is this baby right here. So if anybody does do pressure canning with an induction burner, let me know how you do it and if it works well. So now we just have to get our stroganoff heated up, stir a little sour cream in it, and pour it over our noodles, and it's lunchtime. 
right? It's all heated up. And they say to put in a large spoonful of sour cream. So it's up to you how large you want it to go. I just grab some and slap it in. I like a lot of sour cream. And let that melt. You turn off the heat first. Get that all stirred in. The noodles are almost done. And we are gonna have some yummy stroganoff for lunch. Look at that. Oh. If you've never had beef stroganoff, you should try it. It is really good. If you like beef and mushrooms, it's amazing. Well, we thoroughly enjoyed our beef stroganoff for lunch and we enjoyed our pizza with the boys for dinner too. And I wound up with eight quarts of yummy beef stroganoff that we can enjoy all winter long. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye.